Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome to the channel. If you are clicking on today's video, you are curious about some of the best controller settings that you can possibly have in Halo Infinite. Now, I have played this the second it has came out, also in Alpha, and I have over 20 years cumulative experience of playing the Halo franchise, so I know a thing or two about a thing or two. So, without further ado guys, let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we dive into today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members thank you guys so much for funding the channel and also my crippling addiction to sticky notes. Okay guys so the most important part of your controller settings is to make sure you have your buttons in line that makes sense. What I mean by this is you don't want your jump button on your A and then your looking stick to be with your right stick. So for example every single time you jump you have to take your thumb off of the analog in order to initiate that command. Wouldn't it be more simple to have that on a paddle or maybe even have A on the stick itself just, just so you can look and jump at the exact same time? Believe it or not guys, this is super huge when it comes to those really close quarter fights, the real millisecond fights that it's whoever gets the first shot off, right? Especially when you need to whip around and hit a headshot and they're up in the air or you're jumping over them it's so important for you to be able to jump and look at the exact same time so if we take a snapshot here at my controller um, you can copy and paste these settings by all means this is just what I use this is my preference but I want to focus on the melee the jump and then also the slide so yes there is sliding in this game it's very underrated I don't think people have completely understood how invaluable sliding is so I have my slide on my stick just so when I go around the corner I can whip and look at the same time so I don't have to take my hand off of my stick to initiate a command on B for example which is what it is by default and then go back to my stick I can do everything in one solid motion same thing for my jump and same thing for my melee. That's why it's super important to have paddles on your controller because if you do not have paddles on a controller, it's really hard to do these three commands simultaneously while looking. Okay, so we're not going to focus on thumbstick layout. Now on the vibration, I do suggest you guys turn this off. Now if you like the immersive feeling, I mean that's awesome, but at the end of the day, the vibration just throws you off. Like when you get hit, it's, it's annoying, and at least to me. So that's just a little tip I will toss in here as well. Okay, so the next option I really want to go over is the hold to zoom. Now, I know back in the original Halo days, depending on your controller settings, on your sniper, for example, you have to click and then unclick it again to get out of your zoom. So hold zoom limits those button mashings that you have to do. So instead of hitting it twice, you have to hit it once. And in those really like high intense situations, that is a game changer in how fast you can get out of your zoom. Next, we're obviously going to disable a hold to sprint. Uh, that's really annoying. There's no auto sprint in Halo, surprisingly. Um, I really hope they add that in a feature when the game actually goes live or when the campaign drops rather. You definitely want your maintain sprint on because you don't want to have to hold your stick down the entire time because you will wear out your thumbs pretty quickly. Also, have auto climber enabled. So this is so while you're midair, you can hurdle objects more easily. So if you're in the air, you actually have to click the jump button again in order to hurdle objects. So having this enable will also cut down on one extra click. Okay, so the big part of the video is the sensitivity and acceleration portion. Now, this one I will try my best to explain the difference between a linear and exponential curve. If you guys are unfamiliar with what that is, I'll again I'll try my best to explain it. So the first thing we're going to look at is look acceleration. Now when I first started playing this, like for the first three hours, it felt super sluggish because by default this is at two if you simply move this up to five it feels absolutely phenomenal it feels super responsive it doesn't feel sluggish it doesn't feel laggy it doesn't feel like you're not getting your input so i moved this all the way up to five and i'm definitely never going back now this is where your preference comes into play i always play at a super high sensitivity the reason I play at a high sensitivity is because that's the way I've played for the past two decades. On Call of Duty, Apex, Fortnite, Halo, you name it, I've always maxed out my sensitivity. This is a good habit to get into because Halo Infinite is crossplay. So if you're an Xbox, PlayStation, PC, doesn't matter. You're going to be playing with everyone. So if you are on console, you have a controller, your sensitivity is capped off at a certain speed at which you can spin your character around. People on PC, 
with mouse and keyboards, they do not have that cap. So by having this as high as you can, you can almost match their reactions. If you had this slower, you're going to turn slower. That's milliseconds that you're not going to be able to target your enemy while they are targeting you. So my best suggestion for the horizontal vertical sensitivity is to play comfortable or play at a comfortable sensitivity that you can maintain your accuracy because in Halo, accuracy is everything. So mask your accuracy and then slowly play around with your sensitivities and try to get them as absolutely as high as possible. Going into the zoom sensitivity settings, now this is completely how you guys have your sensitivity set up in the previous section. This is inversely proportional to the previous section. What I mean is, if you have a really high sensitivity as I do, you would typically have a really low zoom level and then vice versa for having a low sensitivity, you'll have an inversely high zoom sensitivity. So now we're into the move and look thumbsticks. This section uh, is pretty underwhelming. Depending on your controller, maybe you're thrown it against a wall three, four, I don't know, 20 times and somehow it still functions and your analogs may have a little bit of drift. So this is the section for you, right? For you to play around with on your own. I can't tell you how to change this. Your controller may be, you know, your dude may run in circles when you just lay your controller down for all I know. But what I do want to focus on is this max input threshold. This is huge. I wish there was a graph that Bungie or excuse me, 343 could put in to kind of show you how this curve works. So go ahead, let me read this off. Set how far your thumbstick is from the edge before the maximum input registers. You know, like, what does that even mean? They go on to say lower values increase the variance in the acceleration curve, higher values reduces slow turn. So what this means is let's say we put this all the way to the right. Okay. So this is what you would call a linear regression. And what this means is when you barely move your stick left, right, up, down, front, center, doesn't matter. You're going to get a one to one output. Meaning if you barely move this stick, it's going to move the exact same speed as if you push the stick all the way over. Now, Let's look at the opposite. If we go all the way down to 0.5 or some of the lowest settings, this helps you fine tune your aim for people who have higher sensitivities like myself. So if you barely move your analog, your cursor will barely move. You know, you know your reticle will barely move. And of course, the higher and higher you go, the more that variance is. So I kept this completely neutral because that's just what felt right to me. But this allows you to Again, whether you play a high sensitivity, maybe you need to control your looking and your flicking a little bit more fine tuned than I do, then lower it. If you need a, if you play more like a linear style, kind of like in Doom, and there's a, there's a few other games that have a linear play style. Fortnite, I know linear is pretty popular. Then you want to crank this bad boy up all the way to 15. And uh, same thing goes for the the look thumbstick. So that that's the move thumbstick. But mostly what I was talking about was the uh, the look thumbstick. This is where it's super, super important to dial in exactly how you like it. It will take a few matches for you to really get this under control. Okay, even though this isn't controller related, I felt it was very important to mention it. So in your display settings and video, if you have a field of view slider, crank this bad boy all the way up because what this allows you to do, it allows you to see more of your environment around you. So knowledge is power in Halo Infinite. You'd be surprised how many people can flank you and you not even know it because the mini map only works if they are literally humping your dick okay so turn this all the way up and you're able to see much much more of the environment and react accordingly okay so the very last tidbit i want to talk about is actually in the accessibility tab under visual so you can actually change your reticle customization here i'm not sure why this isn't uh, somewhere else in the uh, the subcategories but it is here in accessibilities you can change your, your HUD opacity, you can change your reticle outline thinness, your, your reticle opacity, just whatever suits your fancy. I just figured I toss this in at the end because I didn't know it was here. So also, sensory, please turn speed lines off. This is the most annoying feature in the game. I cannot tell you how often I see the speed lines and it, they're, they're just like little white wind streaks that go across the screen. It's super annoying to me. It, it, like I understand like you're, they're trying to make the game like more immersive, but to me, it's just super annoying. And also the blur usually turn this down like 80 or 90. I don't even know why I have it up at 100. Like the, the blur is kind of annoying too when you turn 
a screen shake, turn this down to like 50, 6, uh, way down. If you want to be immersive, that's cool. Or turn this way, way down because when you get hit with grenades, when you get hit with, you know, whatever power weapons, it is actually pretty disorienting. So have this as low as possible without, you know, losing the, the whole immersive feeling. Okay guys, so that about does it. If you found anything at all interesting or helpful in this video, please consider dropping the channel a like and a sub. It'll help keep me motivated to keep making Halo content for you guys. So with all that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.